Good morning, folks. I expected some big things from this latest NASA announcement. Now, they only had 345 seconds to capture footage when the rocket reached suborbital max height, but this picture proves just how darn good the cameras were. And the big announcement is these large coronal magnetic loops of charged particles in plasma, which most of you recognize easily, and which are known to be sped to near the speed of light causing emission of UV radiation and the discharge of X-rays when they violently interact with a solar flare, yes those, in their words, are potentially responsible for contributing to the corona being so much warmer than the surface. Forgive me, I must admit, I thought that was already part of accepted heliophysics, not to mention common sense. If you are used to the temperature anomaly maps, you're used to seeing red, but Asia's feeling the other half of climate change right now with the temperatures dipping low. Salt Lake City, pollution warning. I'm zoomed way out on the RSOE so you can see the plane crash in Antarctica. Status unknown, it's three Canadians stuck on a 13,000 foot ice plateau. First few flyovers saw no signs of the missing. They're alone in the worst place on the planet and their time is running out. Send every positive vibe you got. We are zooming in on the Taal volcano in the Philippines. It was recently rocked by a number of harmonic tremors and the worry is for an eruptive event. The four pointer mark is the line for above average on the Northeast Caribbean. California doesn't get one every day either and the USGS has this 4.4 as a 3.9 in Colorado. This mid five pointer in Russia hit six on at least two of the meters. We have a toxic algae warning for some of the Tasmanian waterways and there was a mass fish death just north in Victoria. Checking on the cyclones, Peta has puttered herself out pretty much while Gary still might have some fight left in him. Headed directly for the Cook Islands, take heed or warn those you know who live there. Tahiti will be missed by the main cell but the rain shearing off to the east will be a factor. Solar wind speed dropping further. This is part of the weakening solar magnetic fields I've discussed for months and over which NASA recently expressed concern. It's part of the reason cosmic ray flux has been higher than average, approaching 101, but still lower than the observed max. Yesterday's main solar eruption flew south, and a few hours later, another filament destabilized and ripped away from the sun. Watch closely as you can see the point of separation where most of the plasma curls and lifts north away from the Earth. Together with the filament eruption from yesterday, the blast looked like this from Earth using SOHO. Tough to tell if any of the ejecta is headed this way. Earth off to the right on Stereo B. Looks like it's a close call for missing us north. Looking on Stereo A with the Earth off to the left and Jupiter in the background just left of the Sun. This too is a very close call. According to spaceweather.com, Earth is not in the line of fire, but NASA's own endless spiral shows it does impact Earth, represented by the little yellow dot. NOAA shows a faint burst on their endless spiral that I need to speed up to see it all. So add a CME potentially to the coronal hole stream that is potentially on its way to Earth. NOAA still labels this active region as beta gamma, but my comments from yesterday hold true and besides, she's headed for the limb today. The northeastern active regions do look small. Without a single sea flare, the sun has managed to fire a few big CMEs in the last 48 hours via filament eruption. Let's have eyes on the solar wind speed as well as she needs a boost. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.